In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the web challenges from NahamCon CTF 2023. I already made a video for Marmalade 5 for the Integrity channel, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. I won't be covering that again in this video. But let's start off with Star Wars, which has the most solves at the moment. The description says, if you love Star Wars as much as I do, you need to check this blog. And we've got an instance already launched, so let's go and take a look at it. All right, so we get through to this X-Wing page. We've got a login box that says invalid session. We need to sign in. So I'm going to try admin, admin. And it says invalid credentials. Let's go and sign up instead then. And normally, I just try to see if we can register an admin account just out of interest. I try to do that, but it says the username is taken. So let's do cat, cat, cat. Sign up. Successful. And we'll log in. And we log in, we can see that we've got this blog post, we can click on read more. And down here we have a comment box, so it's going to be worth going to try some stuff in here. We could have a look at our source code, we could have a look to see if there's any more posts. Can we just change this to two? Maybe there's something interesting in there. But if you get through to this page and see there's a comment box, that's probably where you want to start focusing. And maybe to begin with, you'll just try something to see whether you can actually inject some HTML in here. So can we do like a header, say hi? And then h1, send that and see does it render in big. And it does. It says that it needs to be reviewed, which is interesting. Maybe that means there's some administrator who's actually checking our posts. If that's the case, then what if we have some kind of script in here which reflects back to the admin whenever they are reviewing the comment? Because then it'll execute in their browser. And maybe they've got some interesting cookies. Do we have any cookies? Let's have a look. We've got this one here, which is a JWT which makes sense because we've just registered and logged in. So let's try and put a script in here. First thing we want to do is have somewhere for this to call back to because we want to retrieve the admin's cookie. And to do that, if we have a script in here, we need the cookie to go somewhere and that's going to be to a server that we control. So I'm going to use web up here, which is an alias that I have just to create a Python web server. That's the command in case anybody wants it. I'm also going to open up a ngrok server. So we'll do ngrok HTTP 8C. And basically, this is our local HTTP server. So it can't be accessed from the internet. And this is just exposing it to the internet. So we're saying that we want you to redirect any requests to and from the local HTTP server to an actual web address, which is this one here. I'm going to take a copy of it and then this is what we're going to use. So let's go back. There's a lot of different ways that you could do this. A lot of things you could try. Let me just create some script tags. First of all, close that off. And the way I did this was new image. And then we set the source to be equal to our server. And then we want to grab the cookie. So I'm going to say C equals, you don't really need this here. It's just so we can separate things out. Okay. And then we say plus document dot cookie. And that looks good to me. Let me try and click on send. There we go. The admin will review it. So now we just need to wait for the admin to review it. We go down to our server and it was very quick. You see, we've got this request, although this might be our token from the page reloading. I think it was. Yeah, notice these two tokens are different. So whenever we posted that, it refreshed the page. So it's actually triggered on our browser. So we've stolen our own cookie and that's not what we want. We want this cookie here and we can just go and replace the one that we have. Do F12 or do this in your burp suite repeater, refresh the page. And we now have access to an admin panel. We go and open that up and we see that we've got our flag. The next challenge is called stickers and the description says, woohoo stickers. Hackers love stickers. You can make your own with our new website. And we're told that the flag is at the root directory, flag.txt, and we've got a web server to connect to, no source codes download. So let's go and take a look at it. We open it up and it's a sticker shop and we can put in some information here. So the first thing I did was just try to put in some server side template injection payloads just to see whether these render as they are or do they turn into a 49. And I put this into each of the form fields and submit. However, there is some validation, so we can do an actual email, try and submit again. We'll be told we need a number and we'll basically be told this for each of the fields. So I'm just going to do that now. 
Submit. The organization name doesn't render, so it doesn't look like there's an SSTI vulnerability. There's no form validation now, so we could go and try to change some of the stuff, like see if we can actually input characters in here, and we get an error message. So let's go back. Let's have a look at the request in Burp Suite. We don't actually see it here by default. You'll see if I refresh the page, there's just nothing showing up, and that's because it's hiding binary content. So we can just tick this box, click apply, and then we'll see all of these requests in here. And it means we can have a look at the headers, see if there's anything interesting, have a look through the content, and very quickly we'll see PyDOM PDF 1.2.0. So the first thing we should do here is search PyDOM PDF 1.2.0 exploit. We do that, we'll get plenty of results back about a zero day in DOM PDF. And there's a GitHub link here. This is the one that I went through by Positive Security. It has POC, so there's a demo application and an exploit as well, so you can test this out locally. And here's the attack. So the DOM PDF 1.2.0 is vulnerable to remote code execution via a true type font and PHP polyglot file. And here's a summary of the attack. So the attacker injects some CSS into the PDF exporter. The PDF exporter requests the font from our server. We deliver a malicious PHP font, and then it's gonna send us back the PDF. And now we can go and find that cached font, which is actually some malicious PHP script. Okay, all good so far. So we can clone this repo. We can run, we don't need to run the demo application because we've already got one, but we can run the exploit server. And if you follow this through, it will work. The only thing is it's currently set to call PHP info. So we would want to change that to be something malicious like a reverse shell. And we can do that just with this repo. There's also another link, which I'm gonna take a copy of because if you want to do this manually from the start, then this would be a better article to go through. This basically tells us we can look for a font on our system. We can copy that font to a PHP file and then we can add to the end of that our reverse shell. We create a malicious CSS which has some details in it. This is important because the name of the font and then the weight and the style will be used to actually find the font once it's been uploaded. So you see here the path is DOM PDF, lib, fonts, and then the name of the font, underscore the font weight slash style, underscore the MD5 of the URL, which we get down here, making sure that you use the dash N flag to remove the new line. So we need to do this manually. If we're using the example that we have here, we basically just need to make sure that we use whatever they've got. So exploit font underscore normal underscore, and then we need to update the MD5 with the address of wherever we're hosting this PHP script. Okay, so you can pick either of these to do. I guess let's go through the manual version. Why not? I'm gonna take a copy of this. This is actually incorrect. This should be looking for TTF, not PDF. So I'm gonna search here for TTF. Oh, that's not TTF, that's TFF. All right, next up, I'll just grab any of these. I'm gonna do copy and then we'll copy it to, what name do we have here? That was evil.php. It doesn't really matter as long as we know what it's called, but I'll save it to evil.php. And then I've also got a web shell in here that I use, very standard PHP shell. And we want to insert this basically to the bottom of the script. We need to use a get parameter here because if we put in our reverse shell location, our URL, then you'll have a problem if basically, if you use an ngrok like I use, you can only use it once at a time. So if you want to use it for your HTTP server and for your TCP, you'll need to do one after another. And we don't get the TCP URL until we've exited the HTTP URL. So we have to basically use this. So I'll open up evil.php. It's gonna say it can't render it, but let's just try. Okay, this is a really big one. The example online is tiny. Hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. That's it, we'll save that in there. I don't know why I always get this error message. And let's go back. We also need a CSS. So, so we create evil.css. And we put in the font information in here. We need to put in our URL, so I'm gonna Create a web server here again, so we'll do web up, and then I'm gonna split this. I'm gonna do ngrok http 8c. We get this URL, and that's gonna be the URL that we use. So we'll go and paste this in here. 
save that and now we need to get the md5 for that as well so we'll do echo dash n and then the url followed by evil.php and then we want to send that to md5 sum there we go that's our md5 we'll need that shortly as well okay i think that's all looking good so now we need to go and basically load this in the PDF converter. So where we had the organization, I'm going to paste this in. I need to grab the ngrok URL again and just replace this. And that should be that. Let's hit enter. Let's go back and we can see the request to evil PHP and evil CSS. That looks good. All right, now we need to go through then and let me take a copy of this. I'm going to paste this in here and let's just grab an example of what we want here. So here's the path. It's basically going to be the same because we called it the same thing. The only thing that's going to be different is the MD5. So I'll go and update the path. Paste that in there. Go and grab the MD5. Where was it? It was in the terminal. Take a copy. There we go. We run that and we get back our font, which is good. So we've located our file that we've uploaded. Now we do cmd equals and then whatever we want to do here. The problem is I use such a big font file. Now we have to scroll down all the way to the bottom of it to actually list out the file directory. I guess if we go to burp suite, it might look a little bit better. Let's go send that to the repeater and then let's try and do cat plus for the URL encoding and then flag.txt send scroll down all the way to the bottom and there's our flag. The next challenge is called Hidden Figures and the description says look at this fan page I made for the Hidden Figures movie and website, not everything is what it seems. And again we've got no source code so we'll just open up the website, go and take a look at it. There's a lot of links on the page which don't go anywhere so you can see whenever you highlight them you just have this little anchor symbol at the bottom and that's the same with all of the links on the page as far as I'm aware so we can have a look at the page source and see if there's anything of interest in here. Notice that we have our assets directory, so we can go into assets and then let's see if we list the directory. We can see what files are in here. I went through all of these files, a lot of them just seem to be fairly default files, didn't have anything hidden in them. We have our image here is one thing, so we'll download the image. Let me save that. So I did, notice that said PNG, but it was actually JPEG whenever we tried to download it. So we might check the exif data on this. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Exif tool, hidden figures, just see if there's anything of interest in here, any interest in strings. Obviously it's mentioning hidden figures as the challenge name, which is a bit of a hint that there might be something hidden somewhere. I was also thinking with the CSS as well, maybe we could go and have a look at the style sheets. We have one with 3,000, 840 rules so I had looked through here just doing some keyword searches for flag and things like that but yeah nothing of interest we don't have any cookies or anything like that oh where is my storage there we go yeah well we do have cookies but no cookies of interest for the site although there is this one in local storage test is one I tried playing around with this as well I don't it just resets every time you reload the page so yeah that didn't get us anywhere However, one of my teammates noticed if you search through the source code of the page, there are some very large base64 encoded strings around the images. So you can see that we don't have word wrap on here. So let me move all the way over to the right and scroll down. Here's one of them. In fact, let me take a copy of all of this and we'll go and put it into Sublime. And then we'll be able to see the word wrap in a bit better. I don't know, does it have it on by default? Yes, okay. So here's a big chunk here. So we've got a big chunk of base64 encoded data. And what we can do is extract this base64 decoder and then go and see does it match up to what we have for the image already. So you can see we've got some different images in here. This is the thumb image. So let me go up to the image that we downloaded the cover image. I think it's this one. Yeah, so here it is, hidden figures, paperback movie, and then we have all of this base64 encoded data. If you try to highlight all that, it's going to take ages to scroll through it. So what I'll do is just save this to a new file. Just double click or triple click to select the whole thing. And then we'll just take out the bits that we don't want. All right, so where does it start? It is here. 
So we'll take that out and then we'll just replace the spaces with nothing. And there we go. So we can save this now to the file. We'll call it data.b64. And now if we base64-d to decode the data, and let's send that to file. Let me minimize this so we can see it a bit better. And now we can do file, file. We'll see it's a JPEG image, so we could just open that up as well. Let's do a diff on the hidden figures and the file so they differ. All right, I'm going to move file to new.jpg and let us have a look what we've got. So new.jpg. So you can see there's a difference in the file size of these two. So you might try and do like checking strings greater than 10 characters. Do that in new.jpg. Do the same in hidden figures, but we don't get anything of interest from doing that. We could also check the XIF tool for the new.jpg to see if that matches. And it does. We can try bin walk to extract the files. This didn't work for me, I don't think. Let me try this again. Oh, what's the name of it? Oh, it didn't create a folder at all. Okay, but it did show there two files. Let me do foremost new.jpg and let us do tree output. I notice that there's two JPEGs in here. So go to the output folder. We have a look at the JPEGs and we've got our cover image. And then we also have another image saying, thank you, Mario, but our princess is in another castle. So we could analyze these images a little bit further. I did do that as well, but there was nothing more to find. And it says in another castle. So this is kind of a hint that maybe we should have a look to see if there's anything else of interest on the site. And if we do that, we'll see basically that we have some other base64 encoded images. So I'm going to scroll down. Let's grab this one at the bottom. I can't remember which one it is now. So let's grab this one. We'll do the same thing again here. Just extract. We could use some regex to do this. It'd probably be a quicker way to do it overall, but this will be fine for now. So I'm going to do that again. Let's do that again and we'll check the file. It is JPEG again. So we'll move the file to new.jpg. I'm just overwriting the old one. I'm going to remove the output folder so we can run foremost again. We do that and let's go and check the output. Output, we've got a PNG this time and the PNG has the flag in it. Now the only thing is I couldn't be bothered typing all of this out so I just had a quick Google on how we could do that automatically. Let's go into the PNG folder. We'll install Tesseract. And now we can do Tesseract-L for language is English and then we'll give it the PNG file and then we want that to print to output. We'll just print out the output.txt and there's our flag. We can just go and copy and paste it now. The next challenge is called obligatory and the description says every capture the flag competition has an obligatory to-do list application, right? And again, no source code, so let's just open up the challenge page and it tells us to log in as usual. Might try some default credentials, might try and run it through SQL map or something like that, but we've got a sign up link, so let's go there instead. I did try and register as admin, but as usual, it was taken. So let's register cat, we'll log in as cat and we get through to the to-do application. So as usual, we might try some injections here. Let's see, can we put in a H1 tag and see if it renders? But it doesn't, what can we do with it? We can select it, we can delete it, we can have a look at our completed and our active challenges or tasks. But yeah, nothing of interest. Maybe we'll try some server-side template injection payloads. What I did actually was I went to Hattricks SSTI and grabbed a polyglot. Search for poly. Here we go. All right, so we can grab this one and just try and find out, does it come back with some error message or any kind of blacklist filters? We add this here, submit, but it doesn't. There doesn't seem to be any issues. The text just renders as text. And I did try some other things here, like using SQL map and also brute forcing other SSTI payloads because I thought this was going to be the issue. But yeah, the notes doesn't seem to be vulnerable. So what else do we have? Let's try and create another task. And one thing that we do have whenever we do that is it's redirecting us back to the same page with this get parameter success equals task created. So what about if we take a copy of that SSTI polyglot, paste it in here, and then hit enter. 
And notice we've got back this message saying hacker detected, the following are not allowed, and then we've got a lot of different blacklisted words and characters. So we know where we want to try our payloads. We can go back to hack tricks and try some of the stuff that we have in here. If you search for bypass, that's what we're going to be particularly interested in. So do we have any? It's looking for the options on the side, which is kind of annoying. Here we go, bypass filters, note that spring framework. Here we go, Python, check out our following page to learn tricks on arbitrary command execution bypassing sandboxes in Python. And we can go through to this and basically just start trying payloads to see what gets blocked and what isn't. I mean, we can see what's filtered out anyway, so we know that we're not going to be able to use underscores, we know that we can't use dots, we can't use any of these words, exec, eval, system, popen. So quite a lot of things are blacklisted. We scroll down for a while. So we could try some of these payloads. We know that built-ins is blocked. We know that popen is blocked. That's not popen, it's open, but we have discover arbitrary execution. So this one has a good example, which actually uses hex to filter out the, or to replace the underscores to bypass any checks on underscore. So that's one thing we'll need to do because we know that we can't use underscores, but we can also use that technique more generally on text or we can use concatenation as well. So we could just use like a plus in between. Instead of saying class, we can say CLA plus SS and that won't trigger off that check. So let me take a copy of this one. Let's go back. This isn't gonna work because there's a lot of stuff in there which is not allowed. Coming back saying hacker detected. Oh, actually, the very first one of that is blocked, which is class. Let me go to the payloads, all the things link. So this is a ginger two filter bypass. And I kind of started with this one. So I started with this. Let us enter that. It's not going to work because we have, we don't have globals blocked, but we have built-ins blocked. So if we take out this bit, I basically just want to try and filter this down. Oh, I'm missing the curly braces at the end. And you can see that it does actually print out the globals. So we could take a copy of this and go and put this into Sublime or go and put it into actually something to format the JSON would be better. You can go to like JSON stack viewer I often use. I don't have it in my favorites here, I guess. If you have like an extension in code, maybe this will format automatically as well. But yeah, we could go and have a look through this and see what we have access to. Really, there's not too much of a complex filter. I was overthinking this at the beginning and trying to use like extra request parameters. So rather than, oh, where's my page gone? Rather than submitting the blacklisted words in this success parameter, you can include another parameter like C equals and that would have built-ins. And then you would reference that in this parameter. But the problem is you can't use dots. So in order to access the request parameter, you have to do like request.param or something, which won't be possible. However, we don't need that. We can basically just go and add some concatenation and some more hex encoding. So let me take a copy of this again. Let's go over to Sublime and we'll paste this in. Oh, that was the wrong one. I meant to copy the one from Payloads All The Things. Okay, we'll paste this in here. We're not allowed to use built-ins, so we can say built and then we can just do a plus in between. So there we go, we've separated those. And I think we can't do that with we can't use import either. So again, just the same thing, adding a plus in there. We can't use p open, so we'll add a plus there as well. And I think that's it, let's try and do that. And there we go, we get back our ID. Actually, whenever I tried to do this, that didn't work. I had to use a reverse shell in order to get it. Let me try now, I mean, that worked. So I guess we can just try and do now cat flag.txt. Although, oh, we can't use spaces and we can't use dots actually either. Um, okay, let's go to Cyberchef and we'll convert the command from hex. I've got too many things open. I'm gonna start closing things down. All right, so cat flag.txt. I'll take a copy of this. We'll put it in the Cyberchef and then we'll convert it to hex and we will make sure the format is backslash x. Take a copy of that and then We'll just replace this here. We do that and we don't get the flag. Oh, I know why, because the flag isn't there actually. Okay, let's do ls. So I got a shell last time and then realized we have to go and enumerate a little bit. So you can see ls works. 
let me, we can't use spaces, so I'm going to do lsdb. We'll take a copy of that and then paste that in here. And we've got this db sqli. And what I did, you could do this in a few different ways. We could copy that over and open it up in like SQLI browser. What I did was just strings on db and what was it called again? Well, you could do db.sqli, you could also just do a, an asterisk here as a wildcard and just say give us a string because there's only one file in there anyway. So let's paste this in, submit, and you see that we get back the database, the strings from the database, which contains our flag. So there's two more web challenges left, which is museum and transfer. I did spend a bit of time on museum, but haven't made much progress. So if I do get it solved, I'll add it to the video, but I have some things to do today and I want to try and get this edited and uploaded ready for tomorrow. Reminder that I'm not recording the Marmalade 5 challenge on this channel because I've done that over on the Integrity channel. There'll be a link down to that in the description and also link to the write-ups for this. So for each of the challenges that I've solved, I also made a write-up. So if you're interested in seeing the solve scripts or anything like that, you can check the GitHub link in the comments. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.